one thing that's really annoying about our game so far is that you have to go around objects in order to jump on top of them. I think it's time that we created some one-way platforms so you can jump up and drop back down through the platforms. Alright, so we're going to get started with the bare basics here. You're going to need your player sprite, who's able to move around and jump. And then you're going to need two types of brick. One is going to be kind of like the fill for your mountains. The other will be the grass or whatever platform you're actually going to be standing on. So to get started, first of all, when you're clicking on your mountain tile or whatever you're using, you're going to want to go over into your sprite renderer and make sure that the draw mode has been changed to tiled. At this point, you can use your rect tool and expand it in a way that'll make nice tiles. This is going to form the basis for your entire map. You can now move that around and we'll be able to put grass on top of it. Now we're going to do the same thing for our grass, making sure that our draw mode is tiled. Then use our rect tool to make this into some platforms. Now I'm going to stop right now and add a collider onto this. I'm going to be using a box collider 2D. And I'm going to ask you to take a sec to edit it. And you'll notice that it automatically just goes to one of the tiles. You want to cover all of them. And actually, you only need this to cover the top portion of it, not the entire thing, because it's just going to be when you're walking on top that you actually want to collide. All right, you've got the basics. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create some prefabs. Now this is something we haven't done yet in this tutorial, but in your assets, you're going to create a folder called prefabs. Now prefabs in Unity are just a way to get any sort of a game object that you're going to be reusing and save them. This is a super handy thing to do. I'm going to grab my grass tile here in my hierarchy and drag it down. Now the reason we do this is because now anytime I change this prefab here and add things to it, it will change the, every grass tile platform in my entire game. This is especially handy if, say, you forget to add your collider. You've built your entire map with 30 or 100 platforms. You don't have to go in and add 30 or 100 colliders. You can just go into your prefab and change the one, and it will actually add that to everything. Really handy and will save you a lot of time later on in the game. You'll notice once you've made a prefab that it turns blue in your hierarchy. This just lets you know that it is a prefab. I'm going to do the same thing now for my brick tile. All right. At this point, we're ready to start doing some actual world building. So I'm going to grab my main brick tile here. And actually what I'm going to do in my hierarchy to keep things clean is I'm going to create an empty game object. We'll call this one um, bricks. And I'm going to put all of the bricks that I create in this level underneath there. You can then hit Command D to duplicate those bricks. I'm just going to make a few for now. The nice thing about having them in this other game object is that you can hide them. So later on, if you don't want to have a thousand objects all showing in your hierarchy at once, you can hide them and make it look much cleaner. At this point, I can now take this prefab I've created and start building a bit of a world out of it. you'll see that we've created a much richer world here. But I've already made my first mistake and I'm so glad that I created prefabs because I forgot to tag my platforms. At the moment my jump ability is not working because I haven't put any of these platforms into the ground layer so my character isn't recognizing that he's on the ground. Fortunately, since I made these prefabs, this is a really easy fix. I can go into my prefab folder, click on my grass tile platforms, and up here, simply on layer, make them part of the ground layer. This will now make all of my grass tiles ground. Now this is much nicer and I can move around my world in a much easier way. I can jump and things are looking a lot better. There's one major problem though and that is that my colliders are still keeping me from being able to actually go anywhere. When I try to jump, I hit the colliders. 
Now fortunately, this is actually an incredibly easy fix. Once again, we're going to go into our prefab for our platform. I'm just going to minimize some of these other tabs to make things a little cleaner. And at the bottom here, we're going to add something new called a Platform Effector 2D. Now the Platform Effector 2D just gives us a couple of neat options. First of all, I'm actually going to click on my Box Collider right now, and I'm going to put Used by Effector. Once you do that, you'll notice that this circle will appear. And this actually shows the arc of where it will detect collisions. So if I fall on it at any angle from the top, it will detect collisions. But if I come up through the bottom, it will not. And now when I jump, I can actually jump up through the platforms. Really nice. Now the only problem is at this point, there's no easy way for me to drop back down other than running around them. And you may want to add that feature into your game. Now adding the feature of being able to drop down is something we're going to have to code into our game. And so we're going to create a new script. Let's create a C-sharp script. And I'm just going to call this one Platform Drop. All right, so inside of your code, there's just a couple of things that we're going to need to do here. First of all, we're actually going to create a brand new function. And so, you know, we've got our start and update functions at the moment. We're going to create a new one and actually we're going to use one we've never used before. This one is called a IEnumerator. And what this is actually is IEnumerators are coroutines. So, so they work much like a function, except that they have some abilities that normal functions don't. One of them is the ability to wait for a set amount of time. This is going to be useful because when we try to drop down through our platform, we want to briefly suspend the collider on our character so that he falls through the thing, but then have that collider come right back on again at a short time later. This is why we're going to need a coroutine. So we put I enumerator, and then we can name our coroutine. I'm going to call mine um, fall timer because it's going to have a timer for how long we can fall. You then put a double bracket and then a squiggly bracket, and then put a squiggly bracket where you can put in the actual code. So down here, what we're going to want to do is we're wanting to disable the player's collider briefly so that he can fall through an object and then re-enable it as soon as he's fallen through. So what we're going to do is we're going to go get component. This just allows you to select a component from your player, and in this case, it's going to be his collider. Now you'll have to check to see what type of collider you're using. I'm using a capsule collider, so I'm going to type in capsule collider 2D. You put a double bracket, and then we're just going to put dot enabled equals false. And this is just going to turn off his capsule collider briefly. Now what we want to do now is we want to have it wait for just a short period of time, and there's a code for that. It's called yield return new wait for seconds. We can then in brackets put how long. I've tested this a few times and I find that 0.15 seconds is a pretty nice amount of time. Don't forget that we put the F so it knows this is a float, a decimal. And once that time is up, we're then going to re-enable our capsule collider. So we can put the same line that we have above. The only difference is that this time we're going to put dot enabled equals true. Now we're almost done, there's just one last thing, and that is that we haven't yet said when this will happen, and we want it to happen when we're pushing the down button. So we'll go up to our update, and we'll have it checked to see if we're pushing that button. So we'll put if input dot get key down, so meaning we're pushing a button down, and in brackets then, you'll put key code dot, and then pick whatever your down key is. In my case, it is the S button. And then we'll do a squiggly bracket, and what we do is if they are holding down that button, we want to call fall timer. So down here we'll put start coroutine, and then put the name of it, fall timer. And this script is one that we want to apply to our character, so I'm going to grab my platform drop script and put it up here on my character. And you should be good to go. You'll now be able to jump upward through platforms and push the down button to drop back through them again. This provides the opportunity for all sorts of neat functions in your game and should really allow you to make much more interesting levels. Have fun.